Hi guys and welcome back to Station Tutorials. This week I have for you a leave color effect that's built right here into After Effects and it actually makes it very nice to pull certain colors out of your footage if you're going for like a Sin City effect or something like that. I already have another tutorial where I show you kind of how to do that within Final Cut, but I wanted to show you how to do that in After Effects now with Final Cut 7 kind of being phased out. I'm sure there's other ways to do this in other systems, but I want to go ahead today and show you how to do this right here. All right, so we have this shot here of this shipwrecked boat that has clearly been beached for months because it's almost completely buried. Give it a few more months and I bet you it will be. Uh, this thing was beached, I believe, back in February. And as I'm doing this tutorial, it's June. So, uh, yeah, give it about four or five more months and I bet you it's all the way underneath the sand. Anyways, that's not the point of today. The point of today is to show you this tutorial. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go to leave color and there it is right there. And let's just throw this on our clip. And up here, we're gonna grab the eyedropper. And I just wanna, you know, do this with the blue. It's the most prominent color, obviously, in this shot here. Uh, you can do this with whatever color your heart desires. So let's go ahead and select this blue. As you can see, we have varying shades of blue, and I recommend this for green screen as well. Always select the mid range because if you select one extreme or the other, you're not going to get a healthy overall balance within whatever your color sample is. Same thing with the green screen. Like I said, if you select a darker area, well, it's going to look at that and analyze that as your color versus if you select a lighter area. If you select a level that's in between those two, you get what I'm saying. All right, moving on. So, I want to select some kind of mid-range thing in this area. So let's just go dead center and pick our color out. Okay, now you can say, well, nothing happened. All right, well, we're going to go over here and select the amount to decolor. Let me drag this over here so you can kind of, I mean, it's not going to get any bigger, but it's more space to work with here. And we're going to decolor this all the way. So let's just jack this up to 100%. Okay, now right away, that actually did a fairly decent job. <laughs> this umbrella is blue over here. That's funny. Uh, anyway, we got our reflections down here on the beach. That's holding very well. Uh, we have a little bit of our edge here that we're kind of uh, losing, but you know, we can tweak that over here a lot. So if we just put our edge softness, maybe try 2%, and that already does a lot there. So you can see back to zero, two, that's pretty good. We could push it, you know, five. Let's see what that does to our clip in its entirety. If you push your edge softness too far, I'll just do it to show you. You start bringing colors back, okay? Even at 7%. It's going too far. So I just go to three, what did I have before? No, I had two. Yeah, you just want just enough so that your edges are taken care of. The next parameter we can take a look at here is the tolerance. This automatically defaults to 15. If you're getting any color bleed, you may need to adjust your tolerance. So finding a healthy balance between the tolerance and the edge softness is important. It's gonna totally be on a clip to clip basis because the colors are going to be different in every clip. Um, there's no you know, one stop remedy for each and every one of these things. If you have a very pure color, it's gonna be a lot easier than if you have have multiple color bleeds or hues or different shades of one said color. Now I'm going to show you one more thing you can do with this. A lot of you guys have seen the Sin City looking effect. With what I've just showed you here, you can take it one step further and add a hue and saturation. And with the hue and saturation, you can now take this hue itself and adjust it to anything you could possibly want. I know Sin City uses a lot of yellows and a lot of reds with like the lipstick and stuff. You could take your blue or your green or whatever that you shot and make it any hue that you could possibly want. If you have certain color props or certain color wardrobe or costumes or makeup, you could make those whatever you want, whatever color you want if you're going for this look. On top of that, one more thing you can do is kind of add a nice curves layer or a brightness and contrast kind of thing to where you really crush those blacks down. Since it is notorious for having those really crushed blacks and it looks real crisp and sharp. All right, guys.
guys. Thank you for joining me. I hope you guys picked up a thing or two from this. You can use it to your advantage. If you have any suggestions for future tutorials or if you have any uh, things you want to learn or you want to know and you know you're kind of struggling with, just let me know. Leave a comment, suggestion, and then I'll you know try to touch on it in the future. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me and I'll catch you guys next time.